take off the starting soon sign. Good to go. Uh, who's excited? I am excited. I am. Oh. Everybody. Can I get the Twitch link, please? Oh, um, yeah. Give me a moment. Yeah, and please subscribe to her uh, you YouTube account as to. well. You do I already did that. <laughs> <laughs> Do, 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 subscribe. Anyway, um, <clears throat> hello, everyone, and welcome to the first session of Beyond the Horizon. This is exciting. I've been planning a pirate campaign for a good long while. So all you viewers out there who desire a interesting story about pirates, intrigue, Betrayal, assassination attempts, all that good stuff. You're in for a treat. I will be using a interesting um, set of references. I'll be tweaking them a little bit so it's not completely forbidden. So let's get this party started. We open up this story on a bright afternoon. The sun is shining. Seagulls are in the in the sky and going mine, 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 mine. They don't really actually sound like that, but it's more fun that way. There's barely any cloud sky, but still there is quite the line to get to the ferry that you are currently. All of you are currently boarding as women of children have already boarded. As, um, sorry, I'm making a joke from the mine. <laughs> I'm telling story. I was quiet. anyway, anyway, as, um, where was I? As, uh, you guys are starting to get closer to this ferry, you're only boarding this ferry for various reasons, depending on who you are, but all the other people are boarding for the same reason the island is sinking. This island, which has been there for many, many, many hundreds of years, is was what, at one point a mining island where most of the World Navy got their supplies to the point to where all the mines were depleted and there were so many holes that the island couldn't take it anymore and started to sink. There is... An individual sitting on a table is sitting at a table with a quill, an inkwell, and paper ready to assign people onto the ferry to make sure that everyone's name is registered before they get on the ferry. This individual is um, a bifocal speckled, spectacled uh, half-elf. A little bit older in years. You can see evidence of wrinkles and crow's feet around his eyes. A bit of gray in his hair and the slight pointed ears. You can't see any resemblance of captain or first mate from what you can see, but you know this but you know this particular vessel is being captained by someone temporary until the ferry reaches their destination. All of you are relatively in line. Um, all you hear is next, and the line will move up. Next, and the line will move up. And so on and so forth. Uh, the first person to arrive up to uh, the uh, table before you... Um, I'd rather not say your name for now because I'd rather leave that up. Uh, uh, well, you can describe yourself, Mr. Charles. Ah. Uh, you see a very, a very heavy set man. He's a little rotund in areas, a little bit chubby, wears a, a sort of, um, bandana around his bald dome. Uh, you see that he, around, uh, the right, his right side of his head, he has mat Magitech equipped to help him with his artificial eye, and his entire right arm is an artificial Magitech, which is rudimentary at best. Both of these items are rudimentary. While rudimentary, probably still expensive as heck. Oh, with no doubt. All right, name Captain Charles. Oh, no, no, bruh. I said someone was in front of you. Oh, I thought you said, you said, ah, now you're confusing me. I'm sorry. 
He confused me. Push to talk. Anyway, uh, name? Oh, forgive me, sir. Mr. Jonathan Silver, at your service. Oh, you're this, sh you're this trip's cook. Aye, and I would like to get to me, to me proper accommodations, if you don't tell me mine. Can I go? Yeah, 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 you can go. Hey, thank God. He gives a big, uh, the guy a big wink and he just saunters off. Charles, you're next. All right, my boy. I be Captain Charles Blake. Charles Blake. Uh, yeah, who, who uh like hello, sir. Uh, next to you. Uh, yes. Uh, who are you? I'm his god for this particular outing. I am also happen to be his warden. Uh, would you like me to describe my character, by the way? Oh, yes. Please do. For All right. everyone to hear. Charles Blake stands at six feet tall. He has black hair. Or, well, I believe in the picture it's actually brown. Brown hair and blue eyes. Is tanned by the sun. Wears a tricorn hat with three feathers on one side. He has dreadlocked hair. And he has a few braids in his beard with uh, bits and bobbles mixed in it. You know what I mean? Uh, bu -bu -bu. He's wearing common clothes. Uh, pretty sure right now he, they just have me with my clothes is about it. So, But I have, you know, the trench coat-like jacket that pirates wear, you know, that type of thing. The hat and all that. Some decent boots. Right. Let me change that to brown since uh, I made it brown. But that's <laughs> about it. And I am a human. <sighs> Sorry. Oh, man. My name is Warren Tokashi. It is an honor. We'll keep a close eye on him. The person waiting for your release papers is already on board. Make your way up. All right. And your plays. And the warden starts leading you up here. It's like, oh, normally your sentence would be a lot longer for piracy or be hanged. But luckily for you... Mr. Charles, you decided to behave yourself. I am not that much of a menace once you get to know me. All right, let's get those papers signed. But regardless whether or not you sign those papers, I'm still going to be your guard until we make birth. Then it is up to you to be on the straight and narrow. Yeah, it depends on the actions of others. <laughs> Next. And then up comes a, I believe, much smaller individual. Um, um, specifically of the tiefling race, Miss Rita. Rita stands about 4'8", skin about really dark red, close to, like, dry blood red. Her hair is a bit of a copper color. When it shines in the light, you see the shine of the yellows and bright oranges and the dark reds. She's pretty much hidden under a cloak half the time, but when her hood's down, you see very very small horns on top of her forehead that kind of branch out in three different spots all on the same side. Her tail's wrapped up in bandages. Her clothes are pretty normal for what she does. And what she does is pretty shady. But she walks up, kind of looking all right. absent -minded. Oh, I know you. Rita Zilad or Z Zilad? How do you pronounce that? She gives a shrug. We already have your information here, Tiefling. Make no trouble on board. You may go. She gives an eye roll and goes on board. Next, Harriet. Name, Panda. Oh. Panda. She's typing. Oof. Leave Discord and come back. All right. Let's switch it up. And while she's gone, and, um, be north. You're next. Me? Mm. <clears throat> okay. You can see uh, Dragonborn standing at 6'2", with blue scales. He's wearing brown robes. He has red coral-like horns, long whisker. In his neck, there's a pendant with a red stone. In his right hand, he has a bracelet, a bracelet sorry, with Poseidon's, Poseidon's emblem. Okay. All right. Your name? My name is Rokar Tionspear. All right. You're going to have to spell that for me. I'm not... I'm not familiar with your speech, Mr. Dragonkin. No problem. R U K A R R Tionspear. Okay. Anything else? No, you may go. Behave yourself, Dragonkin. In the name of Poseidon, I will. Thank you. Panda, your thing working yet? I will take that as a no. Um, Wound Worker, you seem to be up next. Next, your Walking name. Up. 
Walking up to the uh, table is a Goliath, a giant Goliath, who stands six foot eight, uh, dressed in white and dressed in the priest robes of uh, the Temple of Poseidon. He He's bald, and his face is covered in numerous uh, tattoo markings that quite literally cover his entire face. And he walks up. Uh, All right, your name? Vinal, own worker, Goliano. Oh, that's a mouthful. Yes. All right. Since you're a Goliath, and I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be familiar, can you swim? Yes, I can. Well, that's surprising. Your people are usually landlocked. All right. That's genuinely surprising. Okay. All right. Get on the boat. Thank you. You here. Next. And little Opalis. You see. Wait, can you guys hear me? Yes. Let me hear. Yes. You see. How fell. At a stature of life, very short and somewhat plump. She has raven hair, silver eye, and red rose lips. Sauntering up, she smiles and says, Hello, my name's Opalis. Opalis Verret. Opalis Verret. Okay. Thank you. Say something. Uh, what? Uh, no. no, not you, um, Panda. Something. <laughs> it works. It works. Oh. Uh, Opalis, um, he's like, all right. Head on up. Thank you. I saunter over. Next is Harriet. Now that she has her mic working. <clears throat> Please describe your character. You see a black woman about 5'7 in stature. She has one. She's heterochromatic with one brown eye and one green eye. However, her green eye is scarred. And she has two animalistic scars across her left cheek and on her neck. She has a bit of a... She has a pale red... Ish headband with curl- covering her curly hair with a couple braids on the sides as well. She wears a almost dirty white shirt with leather armor. That's about it. Okay. <laughs> Your name? My name is Harriet Caffeney. Harriet Caffeney. All right. All right. Head on up. Thank you. Gives a bit of a nod and just heads right up. All right. Last but not least, um, Rayla. That's me. Uh, before. Before we continue, please do not copy it word for fudging word. I beg of you. What am I not copying word for word? I'll message you in Discord. Okay. It has to do with copyright. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm aware. It has to be your own own I, version of this character. I am. So don't copy it like mm-hmm. word for... F- okay, that's mm-hmm. all I ask. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, right. Uh, well, right now... Uh, Rayla stands about five uh, three. She's got cloak on and hood pulled low. She walks up to the uh, attendant. Name Rayla. He adjusts right. his bifocals on his face, squints at you. Oh, we definitely don't see your kind every day. I wouldn't expect you would. I keep to their own. It's surprising to see you on this island. Yep. Well, Miss Rayla, please go up there and don't cause any trouble, okay? Of course not. Wouldn't dream of it. I walk onto the ship. As you walk on the ship, there are only three people left on the island. And they are currently carrying... Two of them are currently carrying the third on a gurney. This man looks old, but virile. And the reason why he's on the gurney is because of the amount of bandages around his middle section. Charles, you would know this as one of your... uh, fellow prisoners that you had to work beside. Ah. Apparently there was, oh, when you guys received the information, there was a cave-in first and there was a number of in- injuries and deaths. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only person they managed to get out of there was this one individual, though you seem to be blanking on his name. Like, this guy looks like a mummy. That's how old he is. He looks like a mummy. <clears throat> As the last people board the the ferry, the game plank is retracted. And you hear, as it's loaded onto the ship, and you hear a female voice ring out. All right, lads and lasses, listen up. I am the first mate of this voyage, Lyra Watercress. As you see a very in very fit elvish lady with um, neck long blonde hair and what looks to be a miniature anchor 
hanging off of her belt loop. The captain will have some words with ye, and ye better listen up good, because he will not be repeating himself. You do what he says when he says it. He then proceeds to step aside <coughs> as you expect something completely different, but don't expect this. As you see a halfling smoking a pipe come forward. He has very gnarly looking hair, very touched by the sea, very, very salt induced. He has a scraggly beard that reaches down to his chest in his almost dreadlock style. <coughs> he has a short sword at his side and what looks to be a scythe he um, uses as some sort of walking cane, but it's not a walking cane, it's a weapon. He wears studded leather armor and seems to walk with authority as you see that he also has tattoos all over his face. All right, let me be clear. I do not like being a part from my ship, but the World Navy said that it was necessary for me to do my duty in order to save you lot. As you can see, the island is sinking. We will be making our way to the island, to the naval island known as, well, it's not technically a naval island, but the Navy frequents it, called Flint. To reach Flint, unfortunately, if you look off the port side, he points off the port side, which those are who are not familiar with um uh seed uh, see uh it's it's the left hand side of the boat so yeah as you uh, all look off the left hand side of the boat you see right in front of you off to the left is an absolute hellscape of uh, of cyclones and storm today just so happens to be the anniversary of Dear Calypso disappearing. And let's just say Poseidon is in a tizzy. Those waves are part of Poseidon. Eris is doing the cyclones. But that's Eris for you. She's chaos incarnate. Unfortunately, we cannot make direct way to Flint. We unfortunately are going to have to enter the Dread Straits. Now, normally, this would be a death sentence, but I have been through the death straits 50 times. How do I know? I counted. I am very accustomed to the dread straits by now. You can talk all you want, but the second, the second that you hear singing or a piano playing out in the ocean, you shut your yap. Because that means there was a death on board this ship. And we have become targets of the notorious rumor that has been going around. Yes, at first it was a rumor, but it is fact. The Fisher has let loose one of its most heinous offenders. The only person I remember, they actually got the name of the ship. He said it was called the Divalange Hollander. I don't know what that means. The rumors you heard about her captain are true. I saw a man look at him directly, and he instantly died right there on my ship. Do not look at the captain without his permission, if he so happens to board. When I finish the sentence, I want to hear a yes, sir. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We did just not. No. Otherwise, the galley's downstairs. For you prisoners, points to a general uh, gap in the um, gob of people and the circle of prisoners. You will be going down to the third floor, where the prisoners and the sick lay. All right, let's set sail, lads. And you hear, I, Captain, start uh, uh, going up 
the masts and start setting sail. You hear the hear the anchor start being cranked, and everyone just starts going about their business as this tub boat starts making way. Now, since we have a lot of players, let's make things easy. First off, I would like to know where everyone is going, not what you're doing. Where you're going on the ship? So uh, how how big is the ship? Uh, it's roughly man of war size, so very very big. Cool. I'll probably hang around near the kitchen areas. Okay. Kind of wander around that area. Is there any place with tables and chairs? The kitchen area. I'd like to go there too. Um, I say I'll be exploring, but probably end up in the kitchen area because she likes. I'm apparently with the prisoners because I'm technically a prisoner. Uh, wound worker is going to head down to the lower floors just to look at the accommodations. Okay. I'm just going to look overboard at over the sea. I will basically be doing the same, just probably on the opposite side. Okay. No matter how many times she does, she'll never get bored. First off, as you're exploring this ship, um, Rita... It's not very much to it. It's basically a giant tub in the ocean. No cannons, not anything. It is literally only a ferry. So You can find the sleeping quarters, the kitchen area, the prison area, and that's it. You do see, however, downstairs as the prisoners are getting situated, you do see... One particular individual is not joining the prisoners right now, as he seems to be signing some papers. I presume that's Charles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He probably just slowly walks by because he's being guarded. Can't really do anything right now. Just slowly pass by. You you just hear the, the person behind the desk. Sign here. Sign here. He's pointing Aye. at the little parchment. and Sign here. Initial here. Aye. What is up with all this writing? Initial here. Sign here. Put your birth date right here. I this paperwork be confo- con- be uh, what's this word? confounding. All right. So, Mister Charles Blake, yes. Your all of your former equipment before you were arrested will be waiting for you on Lent when you arrive. All right. All. Okay, and since I promised this, it is time. Number three. Good news. All right, good news. Your ship was not reduced to toothpicks as originally planned. However, your ship is currently under the command of the admiral who arrested you. Ah, If you want it back, you'll have to talk to him. All right, I'll do that later, once we get to shore, if he's even there. Oh, no, he won't be on Flint. He won't be caught dead on Flint, honestly. You'll have to send him a, 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 an owl. I, uh, you probably I know, problem. I know. But hey, maybe if you're lucky, maybe the lord of the thing can speed up the process. Who knows? That he would can be, very be the generous that, type. Guess. All right, seems that you're set. So, since you are no longer a prisoner, he produces a set of keys and unlocks your shackles. But your former warden will have to keep an eye on you. No offense, I but agree. you are a former pirate. But you yeah. are free to roam wherever you please. And you are free to use the cots upstairs instead of sleeping on that. And he points over to very, very crappy bedding on the floor that you actually see one or two bugs crawl out. One is a centipede, and it crawls out of the pillow. Eh, builds character. <laughs> um, those of you who are in the kitchen area, you see that this cook is doing his diligence like nobody's business. You see that his mechanical right arm, his Magitech right arm, is busy at work. It switches from a butcher's knife to egg-cracking implements to a miniature flamethrower. Okay. Noted. (laughs) Ow! Who's hungry? As you see something crawl up his shirt and then pop itself out, 
you see a little pink slime crawl itself onto his shoulder. Oh, who's hungry? A lot of people raises their hand. Now take a take a real good taste, real good taste of my salmon stew. He offers it to anyone who takes it. I take it. Take a few bites. It's delightfully tangy and yet robust. Ooh, you, sir, seem to have been blessed with Poseidon's ability to cook. Old family recipe. And then you see an eyeball pop up from the soup. Mm, family recipes must be kept in secret. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, that's part of the old family. He grabs the eyeball floating on some in someone's stew and just pops it in his mouth and just swallows it whole. Okay, gross. Mm. I understand <laughs> it might taste good, but oh my gosh, no. <laughs> and it's actually quite delicious, this stew, as I'm going to give you what Mr. Silver looks like. Oh, God. Huh? <laughs> For fuck's sake, of course he looks like that. <laughs> Okay. Eh. What do you mean? Eh. Is it, eh. <laughs> You're an eh. Is it, eh. <laughs> I think I was more of a surprise. Ah, we lost bloody. Over. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Sorry, my my mic unplugged. Um, for everyone's reference, this is what the captain looks like. He, I forgot to say his name, but he is known as Captain Jonathan Misthill. Very rough and tumble kind of look. Looks more like a dwarf so than anything. Be a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys are continuing to sail the 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 two of you who are looking off the side. Um, can I get a perception check from each of you? Like those those two who mentioned they were looking off the side, Harriet and Rita. No one else. I, I said no one else. Shift. Oh, I, Paul. I was looking off. I was looking off on the side oh. too. Oh yeah. Sorry. Thought it was Rita. Sorry. My bad. Exploring. Uh, Harriet. How do I roll again? Okay, so what you do is you go to your character sheet, mm -hmm. and you should see a little section called skills. You see perception underneath nature and medicine. When you hover over it, it should turn red. Click on that if you're on your PC. Bam. Um, character sheet, and this is in... Skills. Left-hand side, under saving throat. Okay. There you go. Um, it's a very lovely ocean, um, very bluish green. And you notice that as you're looking over the side, you are getting closer and closer to what is now known as the Dread Straits. And about an hour passes and you are like right on top of the section that he notified you that you're going through. And the ocean water takes who left and came back. No one. Me. Oh, I mean, okay. sorry. Yeah, everything went silent for me again. <laughs> okay, so um, as you pass from the normal sea to the dread straits, you notice that the water takes a visible turn along with the sky. Like there is, a, it's like someone took a knife and cut between these sections because it is just perfectly. It never like expands or retracts like it is cut perfectly to uh, from a nice vibrant bluish green water to an almost icker blackish green the sky is constantly rolling with thunder clouds that you can hear is you can see a lightning strike off in the distance it's a heavy shade of blackened shade that a, 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 a lightning should never be the color of. It's like someone took all the natural colors and reversed them. All of you that are below deck, as soon as the fairy passes through that section, you notice that every single like sound from the ship has ceased. All the creaking from the waves, all the waves splashing up against the thing. It's cease. That'd be a bad sign. The instant you crossed over, no indication. No, please don't. Unless we are on break, then you can do it. Thank you for asking that, though. Um, 
Uh, yeah, you notice all the seals that were squawking are busy squawking, but their voices are getting more and more silent, more in the distance. One of the patrons, uh, like, looks out one of the portholes and screams, pointing his finger with a shaking hand and collapses on the on the on the floor as there is a seagull sitting there but it is a rotting seagull one of its eyes is completely gone from a side of its head where the skull is exposed it has no lower beak and you can see its tongue is just hanging down and its eye is just staring pox its head to the side <coughs> Flaps its bony wings and then it takes off. You just hear uh, the cook go. Now I like cooking me me decent amount of weird meat, but nothing undead. That is no. The meat has already turned at that point. It's got maggots. While maggots are nutritious, they have already entered the meat, and that's just unsanitary. I as I walk into the kitchen now. <clears throat> so this is like a separate like dining area, separate from the kitchen. Oh, there is, uh, no, no. The dining area is it's part of the kitchen. It's like, part of the kitchen. He, wa- he works behind a bar area, and it's kind of like a hibachi grill. He cooks in front of you. Cool. I will just kind of wait around until he decides to leave the room. The cook? <laughs> mm-hmm. He does not leave. Not yet. He hasn't. Doesn't look like. Hi there, cook. What you got? Here you go. Hands you a bowl of what looks to be brownish green slop that has lumps. Aye, slop be good here, eh? What'd you just call it? Nothing. Aye, that's what I thought you said. Rita just kind of comes out behind Charles, kind of hold out her hands. Here you go, hands you the same thing. You take one sip of it as a caution, and it is not the slop you think it was. It is heavy. It is a heavy, heavy soup. More like a, more like a chowder. It has potatoes. It has beans, green beans specifically. It has bits of corn, carrot, all the necessary vitamins and minerals that a sailor needs to have on a long voyage to avoid scurvy. Can she now put up her hood, hide behind Charles, and then hold out her hand again as she comes out from the other side, like she's a different person? He looks at you. Give me a deception roll. Okay. I actually got a roll for him, too. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> he was like, nice try, Missy. But one per person until everyone gets their serve. But I like your gumption. Aye. <laughs> Does that give, her, give you a bit of a smile? <laughs> she just stands there for a little bit like she didn't hear him. And nothing happens. She will put her hand down and goes down and sit and eat. Starts working fervently at his station. Um, Harriet, you do see the undead single. Uh, can I get another perception from actually everyone? Oh, oh my god, I rolled so bad. No one, a, no one made a, a natural one yet. And I'm not, I got a three, though. Uh, you have not done it yet. No. no, that's... You didn't have disadvantage, so you should be good. Nine. So, what... What does the green mean? Nat 20, but since Natural you don't 20. have a bandage, it's just a 5. It's just a 5. Why do you have the range? Oh, uh, you have yet to roll, so, to answer your I question. I am trying. Right. trying. Bone trouble. I, I can, can trans- actually use the server. Oh, the there it goes. Call? Holy shit. <laughs> what, did I do it? <laughs> yes. Like yeah, one. four times. Yeah. What's the first one Remember? I did? A 6. Ah, shit. It's better than the natural one. Yep, yep. Which you would have gotten if that last one actually counted. <laughs> okay, okay. My character's um, excuse, she is too hypnotized by the ocean being still water at this point. Yeah. Uh, so, Rita, Rukar, Vinoth, uh, and that's it. You hear in the heavy, heavy distance a sound. A very, what sounds like something out of tune. Is it like an instrument? Yeah, it sounds like a piano. Oh, I'll down my soup and go hide. Hi there, Practically no one 
actually hears this, then it starts to get louder. Come on. Well, you hear my character go, Hi there, little ass. What'd be wrong? Dang it. It's not one of the commands. You then. I guess by the time Opalis hears it, she'll, like, like fall asleep or something, because it is very calming. You hear panic in the, in the, uh, in the, in the captain's voice. I want silence! What's the chef doing? As literally has the thing, the piano sound starts to get more and more close. Oh, okay. As the only people on top of the ship can see a ship in the distance. It is a pretty big ship, the size of a brigadine. The ship has very tattered sails. Thank you. Um, finally got it to work. Um, what looks to be three masts and a foresail right below the right just above the figurehead where it's supposed to be. The sails themselves have so many holes. You wonder how it's going so fast, and then you see it. It's floating above. The ocean about five feet where the hull can bottom of the hull can be seen and it looks to be in flame a green flame as it quickly catches up to you guys it pulls itself next to you since you're off on the port side Harriet, before you duck down, you see the words the Vilengi Hollander painted on the side. As a gangplank hits the side after you hide, and all you see and hear are walking footsteps of boots or slapping bare feet. very wet footprints as you see seawater is dripping behind these people who are glowing a green flame you're not looking at them but you know they're there you can see their their feet and then you hear chains and what sounds to be something heavy being dragged links of chains you see boots a pair of boots make their themselves onto the ship as you see chains are just coiled around this person's legs and rope is just dangling there And you hear a voice ring out through the silence. You may look on the captain. Uh, you are not currently on the deck. Okay. The, the only two on the deck are currently Rosie and uh, Panda. Harriet, Opalis, hello! Yes, uh, I'm currently typing it. Sorry. Do you choose to look upon the captain? Um, uh, oh, Opalis is still nodding, which could be her. As you fearfully look up towards the captain, you see that he is. You see that the entire crew is some form of deceased. Some of them are bloated and dripping with seawater as they have clearly drowned. 
Some have broken necks with severed hangman's nooses around them. You see one looks to be a woman and what looks to be an umbilical cord coming out of her gown and what looks to be a deceased baby also undead in her arms. She looks like her face has been caved in by some huge force. You see that the captain is the only one who is not dead. His eyes are sunken in. You can barely see his glinting black eyes. His long, um, sea studded just hair and beard as the sea has clearly claimed a lot of his hairstyle. It's very stiff. His attire is very torn and tattered. Around his body, he seems to be dragging these chains and rope that are currently wrapped on his person. And you hear him speak for the first time. Tell me, where are the injured? Are people going to answer him or not? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. Love I'm sorry. having phone troubles. Okay. I'm, I'm not there. Um, <laughs> I'll pause so we can go down to signaling that she doesn't know. I believe they're on the th third level. She hits her. Like, like, not like a hit hit, but like, dude, shut up. They start walking down the stairs, and you hear you hear a baby start crying on the second floor as you guys are witnessing boots coming down the stairs. Everybody instinctively looks down as you hear the steps of these mysterious dead walk slowly by. You hear the chains slowly make their way through the entirety of the second floor. You abruptly hear a as you hear footsteps go down the walkway. Everybody looks up to see what the thud was and you see a child about seven or eight years old oh, no. looked is dead on the floor. His face aghast in horror. The mother takes her now dead child in her arms. But you hear footsteps come back up. As everyone instantly looks down again, you hear the mother crying as you hear her child being ripped from her arms. As the footsteps go back down. Rita, you're the only one who's actually still down there. Oh boy. You hear the footsteps come down. Everybody instinctively looks down once again. You follow suit and you just hear the footsteps and the chains and the ropes. As you hear the voice, you may look upon the captain. He gives long pause before slowly looking up. You see the same thing I described. I originally came for one soul, but it appears two will be joining my crew on the to doomsday. Now, ye dead walk and join me. As you hear two gr gasps of air, <coughs> as the man who was originally in the gurney makes a sickening cracking sound as he gets up. 
and walk slumpily towards this mysterious person. And you see in the arms of one of the crewmate a recent a kid you saw bored before you, Rita. Now breathes as an undead and blindly follows behind these mysterious undead. His voice rings at, throughout the entirety of the vessel. I am Gan Willem Van Der Decken, captain of the Flying Dutchman. You will remember this name. Fear it. Know it. You will all become my crew. And those are the two. As he saunters off, walking up to the second floor, up to the first, you hear the gangplank Harriet as the footsteps pitter-patter off of it. As you hear the ancient ship eventually start petering away. You eventually hear it the piano fade into the distance. I'm still a little tightly, you is. <laughs> After it ends, you silence besides the woman sobbing is only heard for about 20 minutes and no one speaks. And a sound, another sound in the distance meets your ears. Seagulls. Everyone starts to rush towards a porthole to see what's outside. And they see they're starting to come out of the dread straits. Everyone starts to sigh in relief as the ferry comes out of the dread straits and into normal waters. People start to relax. Eventually, after about another 10 minutes, people start talking again. A lot of people are surrounded, uh, are surrounding the lady, trying to comfort her after what happened. I go looking for the little, the young tiefling to be sure that she's okay. Uh, How is the tiefling doing? <laughs> she was hiding for the most part until she saw sick captain. Um, after that, she might be checking people's luggage if there's some around. I mean, it's not going to stop her. <laughs> Snooping. Well, if you if I find you, I might join you, so uh she's kinda hiding, so you may have to look. Alright. Give me a survival check, Charles, as you are not familiar with the layout of this place, and she did mention she was hiding. Do I need to roll yeah, a sure. stealth check? Uh Man, yeah, sure. We make it fair. Bad today. <laughs> Jesus Christ. At first <laughs> at first, Charles, you think you found her? But it turns out to be just someone dressed exactly like her. They look like is that clothes and everything. You cannot find heads or tail of her. <laughs> oh, did she get taken by the ghost people? Um, how is everyone responding? How's it? How's the chef doing? How's how's he hanging out? Let's see what's his deal? He's gone back to cooking. <laughs> He's gone back to cooking. Cool. He's whistling a tune. Just another Tuesday for this guy, huh? He seems nonplussed about it. My character is shakingly breathing as she tries to recover from what she just saw. Did Opala see the dead child? The dead baby and the dead child? Yes, when they went back. Hmm. You see the captain is currently inspecting everything to make sure things are on the up and up. I was just going to silently gaze out in the ocean at this point. Like, not even a smile on her face now. You hear a clutter beside you. It's like, first time mate laying eyes on the captain, huh? Yeah, it's a bit unsettling seeing uh, undead children. Well, he smokes his pipe. When it comes to the rumors surrounding Willem van der Decken. Sweet Jesus. God damn it, Charles. 
elbows. Ow. Mm, I just stubbed my toe. Okay, I'm good. Anyway, geez. Mm. when it comes to rumors behind Vandertekin, what they say about him is true. He wasn't a pirate by any means. That's not what most people know about him. He was never a pirate. He was a smuggler. He looked professional on the surface, but he smuggled illegal goods. And at one point, he was smuggling a treasure that would have made, let's see here, doing the math in my head, I'd say 30 generations down from his generation, like to his grandson, that many generations down, 30, 30 grandsons down the line. They would have still been rich as kings. Unfortunately, he decided to take a shortcut through the Dread Straits. Before it was the Dread Straits, there was a storm. Eris was playing a prank on local sailors that day. And he got pushed back 42 times. Takes a big whiff of his uh, pipe. By that time, all the crew ran down to food fresh water. They only had a little bit of hard tack and that was it. He was so frustrated during these 42 times that anyone who disobeyed his order either got hanged or pushed over the side. With the child, the woman on his ship gave birth without his knowledge. She was pregnant without his knowledge. So, in a fit of anger after the, I believe it was the 38th time he took her newborn child and beat her to death with it wow damn someone just left after that comment gee willikers no, it was no. the oh sorry <laughs> um, my phone like shut down for some reason i, I it was perfectly timed <laughs> i mean yeah that story <laughs> no my phone just like shut off yeah well, it was like but it's completely 100% true. I could not hear. On the 42nd time that he failed, he decided to do something unfuckable. He took out his sword and he cursed gods themselves out loud, screaming on the top of his lungs. Usually people do it silently in their heart, like smart people. He was livid with anger. So, the gods saw fit to punish him. He would be doomed to sail the seas, the realm of the dead seas, for all eternity with his dead crew and never be able to die until doomsday bell tolls. But then that blasted black mage came along and ripped the hole through the dead sea and now he's out. I've seen that captain five times now. Each time that baby is with them. You know how hard it is. Seeing one's own child being forced to serve on a dead ship. And being on there yourself. Can you imagine the rage his crew feels? Being forced to listen to his commands. You know, unfortunately, when it comes to dead, only Hades is supposed to control that. But he's busy trying to close these fissures. So he can't afford to stop Van Der Decken. We're stuck with him until people brave enough, powerful enough can stop him. And even then, they wouldn't be able to kill him because it was commanded by the gods. I'm... The only way we can defeat him is by tricking him back into the realm of the dead and closing it for good. And maybe, just maybe, we'll have peace of mind. Thank you. I know it's not easy, lassie, but at least we're out of there for now. Pats you on the back. Starts hobbling off. Um, you're struggling to breathe and you're like panic attack. <laughs> you're just, Pretty you're much. just try, trying your best to not... To not hyperventilate, eventually you see this really, um, really young man, about maybe nine or ten. He comes out to you. Hi, here, breathe into this. And he produces a bag. He's like, now breathe slowly. Try to relax. Now, to help you take your mind off of what just happened, Captain and Jonathan Miss Hill actually helped, um... Well, he brought something that might help you take your mind off of it. 
a comfort animal for those who are traumatized. Okay, who is he addressing? Uh, uh, Harriet. Okay, because he cut out from me like a good time. Yeah, uh, you hear the the little boy go, Bessie, come on, Bessie. You hear what sounds to be a little uh bell. Deeding, deeding, deeding. You hear a clock, 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 clock. <laughs> As there is a very fluffy, <laughs> yeah, a, a, a very fluffy sheep. Mm. And it nuzzles into into your tunic and just sits down. <laughs> now that's technically Captain Jonathan's, so you'll have to give it back once we hit shore. Oh, thank you very much, boy. Yeah. Oh, what be your name? Her name. Her name is Cottonball. It's <laughs> a cute name. And my my name is Sid. Ah, Sid. Yay. Nice to meet you. We come back. On the scene where um, Parrot's character is managing to breathe again, he's a little bit more relaxed. The sheep no- kind of notices this, stands up, and starts making its way down down the stairs. Everyone notices this random floofy sheep, and it starts making its way towards the lady who is crying. Circles around and then sits down right in her lap, and the lady just buries her head in. In the sheep's wool. As you are busy waiting for the perfect moment, the perfect moment does arrive. As you see him clean off his place, return his hand to normal, and you see the cook leave his position. Jesus. All right. Um, Rayla is going to uh, shadow him, uh, trying to follow stealthily. Okay, give me a stealth check. Hey, 22. Oh my gosh. Very nice. As fast as perception is higher than that, I'm going to fight someone. (laughs) As he just minds his own business, you notice while you're here shadowing him, you notice that a lot of people tend to, like, give him a lot of room. Not out of fear, but out of respect. You (laughs) see, uh, um, about five minutes into your shadowing, uh, you see him, like, bend down. Like, uh, put his hands on his knees, and you see a um, a child run right up to him and give him a big hug. Yeah. And this child has just the biggest gap of missing teeth that you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Thanks for the food, mister. Oh, it's no problem, lad. It's all part of the gig. Now, Marv, let's go eat our supper. The little slime jiggles. Everyone right, greets him. He tips his hat to them, greets them very kindly. You notice that he is very well loved, even though these are people who he's clearly never met before. Mm-hmm. And you see him like take a position very secluded in the corner. And you see a bowl is set in front of him with, with a little miniature bowl set aside. And the slime just slurps down and then collapses into the bowl. <coughs> and just starts... You just see all the soup go into the slime, and it starts digesting. Got it. Um, is he like in a in a separate room, or is he back in the kitchens area? He's in a separate room. He's in a separate room. Is there anyone else in this room? No. Cool. Is his back against the wall, or is back like to the wall? Is is there? No. His no. Uh, the way he's positioned it looks like his personal quarters. Very small. Very compact. Mm-hmm. Um, the door is literally on his left-hand side. So when you open it, his left eye would be facing, like, his peripheral would be able to be right there. Like, if you weren't so stealth, that is. So did I make it inside the room, or am I outside the room right now? You're currently inside the room. I'm, okay, uh, awesome. (laughs) Fuck. All right. Well, cool, cool. Um, All right, come out of there. I say nothing. <laughs> you think you're caught, and then he like picks up the bowl with <laughs> with the slime in it, <laughs> turns it up and down, and then <laughs> uh, okay. it's a good slime boy. And you more that little slime like jiggles a little bit. You hear a little noises coming from it. <laughs> oh, who's a good lad? Yes, you are. Fantastic. All right. Um, I'm going to uh, take one of my daggers uh, and uh, 
throw it so it like hits the table, startles him on one side, so he looks that way, and then when his attention is drawn to that direction, pull up my sword on his other side. Okay, give me a dexterity check for the dagger. Uh, dex check, got it. Because you're aiming for a specific target. Yep, 18. Okay, it hits right in front of him he doesn't even flinch but as soon as you bring up your sword to him you notice that another sharp object is currently at your gut as well your days are numbered i've been sent to kill you oh did you know well do you mind if you wait a little bit longer so i can finish my meal no it's uh it's it's, it's got to be now it's the perfect opportunity. You're alone. No one watched me walked in here. It's... Oh, it's completely understandable. Might I ask why? For the money. Of course not for the money. It's for the... It's, it's what, what my people do. It's what I've been trained to do, and it's what I'm going to do to you. Ah, your... Your um, uh, name's skipping me. Munef. Close enough. But yes, so you, you have heard of us. Aye. I've hired them a time or two. Do you know how efficient they can be? Oh, hi. I have no doubt in my mind that you'll be able to kill me. But yep, my yep. real question to you is, he very calmly takes another spoonful of soup. Wouldn't you rather do something more amazing with your life? That is... And killing people? It's it's not for the, 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 the pleasure. It's to, to honor my family. Honor your family, is it? That's completely understandable. You must honor the people who gave birth to you. It's completely fine and dandy. I mean, constantly, every year, I go to my own family's grave. Yep, and now you're, yeah, you're going to join them right in a, just a second. Um, shit. Your first time, isn't it? That is a very rude question to ask, I will say that. Well, I can tell. You're hesitating. I understand. When I first killed a man, I was shell-shocked. I was devastated. I dreamt about that person's face for years to come. But let me tell you something, laddie. Lassie, actually, now that I look up, look at you a little bit more. Uh. You managed to sneak past about a hundred people and not be seen immediately by me when you came into my room. Yes, that, yes. my good lass, is skill. And that could be of use. Yep, of use of killing obviously very evil scum like you. <laughs> evil scum? Yep, uh-huh, that's why, that's why there uh, must have been some kind of contract out to kill you. No, unfortunately the only two enemies I made, as far as I'm aware, is my uh, best friend, who is now dead, and this prostitute that I turned down. Possibly her. That's <laughs> sure. What? I don't know. You must got some secrets or something. I know. I serve the World Navy, which is why I got all this equipment on. These are trash com components that they said they have no use for. Look, after you kill me, all I ask is you stick to your own gumption. Look to the horizon. Look to the horizon. You're a great sneaker. You can use that. That's all I... And he finishes his last little soup full, and then he places his wooden spoon in his thing. Is like, And then he retracts the blade. All right, Lassie, I'm ready. Uh, okay, right, it's 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 coming now. I'm going to stab you. That's, yep, it's any second right now. <laughs> he gives you a very gentle smile, and he, like, exposes his neck a little bit more. I book it. I fucking dash out. <laughs> Oh my, <laughs> oh my gosh. I. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Fuck. This is uh, not good. Mission. <laughs> I get the reference. <laughs> the oh I can't God. say that because that is most likely copywritten. Oh, please. No. Oh. Okay, um, right, right. I'm, I am running in a direction, and I'm just gonna, uh, 
You, go you like run in, in a direction. In a direction, yes. If you keep running, you might run off board. I mean, are you going You run up in or a down? direction, and you're not looking where you're going, and you manage to slam full force into what seems to be a wall. Oops, I, pardon me. Man, I, I turned left or whatever was open. <laughs> you tried to go around them, but this individual is covering the entirety of the doorway. <laughs> yeah, I hold up both my swords to it and say, right, if you want a fucking problem, it's a fucking problem here. Get the fuck out of my way. The, the thing looks down at you. Oh, that wasn't very nice. No, because you're in my way. That's not very nice either, I'd say. Jay, please. <laughs> run in the other direction. Uh, you see uh, the pre- people who are currently on the second level. You see the the giant muscle-bound ogre who was fixing to go to his to sleep. Quietly turns around, rubs his stomach. Well, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> dusts himself off. You see that this ogre is wearing... uh, Despite him being an ogre, he's wearing um, very fine clothing. um, A tunic very well tailored to his size and frame. A vest uh, that looks like it's pure velvet or silk. You can't really tell. He looks very, very well reserved. Okay, cool. I'm running in the opposite direction of him. You run the opposite direction of him? Yeah. And you run, and you run, and then you're suddenly not running anywhere as you are running on air. As you (laughs) proceed to fall through the floor down to the basement. Oh, ow. What do I see when I get down there? You see a storage area? That has a lot of the prisoners. They're either playing cards with each other or with the guards or a dice game. Um, And they all look at you. You feel a gigantic hand cover your back, grip you by the shirt and pick you up and set you on your own two feet. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, hello. Como tal Uh, hey. what are you saying? Uh, is this we no compound? Eh, and I how high up is the hole I fell through? You didn't run through a hole. You proceeded to tr- try to go down, uh, like in the ladder that goes down to the third floor. Basically, you fell down that without realizing it. Okay, cool. I'm going to go up the ladder very fast now. <laughs> you hear the words, strange lady. I want to find the first like empty room I can find. Okay. You find an empty room. Uh, cool. I I close the door. Are there locks on these doors? Yeah, there is a singular lock. Fantastic. I'm going to lock the door and just hide in that room. <laughs> okay. As you hide in the room, about a minute passes and you notice a stench. <laughs> you turn around slowly and you're in the latrine. He's got to be fucking kidding me. Okay, I would prefer not to hide in the toilet the whole time. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, you said there was a sail on this ship, right? Like a like a big main mast. Yeah, there's three masts. Cool. I'm gonna go up to the deck and climb into the top of one of them. Just hang out up there. I'm gonna walk this time though. So he's climbing the rigging. Yeah. Bloody, yep. Since what? I've probably seen all this since I'm down there, can I attempt <laughs> to follow said strange person? <laughs> Give me a stealth roll. Okay. <laughs> because this person's... And I'd say, strange. since you are so, so panicked about the situation, I'll give um, Rita advantage because of how your character is behaving. Okay. Uh, my passive perception is 16. <gasps> yeah, yeah, you beat it. <laughs> Roll the 24. <laughs> you, you beat it. <laughs> Uh, you were, you were just, uh, you see him, uh, see her go up the rigging and to the rear sail, you know, trying to mind her own business. Yeah, I'm just following this person. Is your hood down or up? At this point, it's down. Okay, definitely following. Okay, you managed to climb up, climb up the rigging. 
Uh, so in the future, I would like it for all of you to make acrobatic rolls in the future okay. to see how fast you go up the rigging. Okay, you didn't ask me for one, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just saying in the future. Oh, okay. Cool. So this one's uh, automatic? Yeah. Okay. Um, so it, uh, you just lay up there contemplating life. You do not notice the other individual who is currently eye level with your current predicament. Like, a, a, Rita, you're, like, your eyes are, like, watching her from, like, you can see the wood paneling. And then she's just hanging up there like in the crow's nest i'm pretty sure at some point she'd be almost face to face with her just slowly just coming closer and just staring blankly at her again i do have expertise in perception so i know but uh, at some point i'm pretty uh, sure you would notice yeah uh, uh, at one point in time you uh turn your head and you realize that there is another person Oh, great. Standing right by the <laughs> by sent to kill me. Do you say that out loud? Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, oh, it lost your tongue on the way up here. <laughs> sorry. She slowly <laughs> looks at you and then says, Horns, mine. And then she's going to attempt to tra grab your horns. What? I, I, okay, so can we call this a grapple check? <laughs> um, is this a two fairy incident all over again? What? Is it those teeth? It's horns. Oh. Uh, you wouldn't understand. You wouldn't understand. Um, um, yeah, it would be considered a grapple check. Um, so strength versus, versus strength. Or acrobatics. Okay, so what do I need to roll? You need to roll a strength check, and you need to roll an acrobatics check in order to try to combat this. Oh. Now. Uh, just a oh, okay, strength yep. check. Is strength this tech. is lovely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that seems about right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just, I swat your hands away. Say, what could you possibly want? She stares at you blankly and then tries to grab it again. Okay, do you, do you not speak common? My? My you. horns? No, your voice, do you, you know, I, I try saying the same thing in Elvish. <laughs> no comprende? She speaks air fertile. You know, okay. This is so fun. Please keep going. This is infertile. <laughs> so, um, I, uh, I, I start uh, speaking thieves can't, which is something that you should know. <laughs> oh, you're no fun. I, I, I went down my list of languages that I knew. No, she says that you're no fun. Oh, do you actually not speak common? I do. It's fun you to do. mess with people. Oh my <laughs> Jesus. Okay, but uh, at least you're not here to kill me. I'm surprised, honestly. You want me to? I'd love to do it. <laughs> not going to be straight with you, not particularly at this moment. I will let you know in the future, though. All right, but I don't mind. It's a very long journey. Yep, and I managed to I fucking blow it right out the gate. As you guys are talking, you hear right in front of you, No! Oh, oh, dirty my arse. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session.